let's try this again. Take two. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hi, how are you all doing, guys? And welcome to my first one-on-one -on -one interview. I've never done one of these setups before. I've interviewed many people, but this is the first time I've done this setup. So hopefully we can do more videos like this and get chatting with more guests about car-related <laughs> topics, okay? And I'm now joined by Aidan O'Keefe. Now, Aidan is a massive Toyota enthusiast, Aidan. Yeah, that's so right. So, you don't like any other brands, only Toyota. I know, I, I wouldn't call myself a uh, brand slut, as they call them, like, but a good car is a good car. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. I would be more into the, the Toyotas than most other brands, yeah. Okay. Now, we're going to speak about Toyota, hydrogen, Lexus, new models coming down the line. But Aiden, will you please tell me, like, why people, when the hybrid first came out, people didn't cop on to it? You know, like, they, uh, they didn't, like, warm to it. I think it was marketed you very know? wrong in Europe anyway, because it really took off in the States, especially in California, with the low emissions and everything, because it was a super low emissions car. Mm -hmm. And then the celebrities jumped on the bandwagon for their green credentials and stuff like that. But um, the Europeans, Volkswagen, Mercedes, BMW, they all went down the diesel route, and they kept developing the diesels and the diesels and kept, just basically kept on it. Whereas the, the Japanese, Honda, Toyota and all of them, they kind of started playing with the, the hybrid system and, and going down that road and getting it correct. And I guess nobody really took any notice of the hybrids as such until the Volkswagen emission scandal. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So don't mention the war, <clears throat> don't, don't mention the war or, or, or the cruelty to the animals in the <laughs> testing either. But anyway... Yeah. We want, we want, that's for another day, maybe. <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole other video there. Yeah, but the, the reliability of the hybrid system mm. is phenomenal. Like, we have a car here in Limerick, and it's a 2006 Prius. And there's just over 830,000 kilometers in it. Wow. Yeah. And over I, half a million miles. Uh, yeah, it's well over it. No, I maintain it myself. No, there has been, it's got a head gasket, one mm. head gasket. Um, and it's got a set of rings, but it's still on its original crankshaft. It's still on its original cylinder head, the original timing chain, the original CVT transmission. Wow. It's original inverter. It's Now, to be fair, it is on its uh, second hybrid battery. So it has two reconditioned batteries and a repaired battery got on, fitted to it. Um, and I've the hybrid battery, Aiden, like how much is that? Uh, it, it depends on the model, up to 2,800 for a Prius. What? <laughs> well, if you consider, if you're unlucky enough to buy... A clocked Audi importing from Limerick, and you end up going to one of the, the local specialists in the German cars in Limerick, and you need a dual mass flywheel and a clutch, and you need an EGR valve, and your turbo is, is wonky or not boosting properly or letting oil into the cylinders and stuff. You can easily have a bill for three grand. Look at the BXC Volkswagen engine, which they didn't stand over. That was inside in the Octavia and the Caddy vans and all that. Every one of them threw the Conrad out through the block. Wow. Why one of those engines like you were looking at? thousand euros like but to buy a brand new sharp block from volkswagen costs more than the price of a hybrid battery mm. so yeah the, ba the batteries are a little bit expensive mm. but for the life of the battery comparing to the components in a diesel engine you're still saving mm -hmm. and if you ha if you have a prius and you're a, you're a taxi it does make sense to buy the new battery uh, to a degree depending on because you've got the nine-year rule that's zero six prius is on a 15-year rule so it can stay on until 2020 or something like oh, that all right okay so that's how the million kilometer mm. challenge is coming so we've made it once it gets to the million <laughs> kilometers it's retiring and he's gone to buy another one <laughs> right. right maybe i should take that car for a spin just to see what it's like on yeah, the road we, we can arrange it he'd be more than happy to give it to you yeah <laughs> yeah i can do a week's <laughs> mile a week's uh, worth of mileage on it and contribute to the million uh, kilometers yeah, the only time that car the only time that car stops is when it's in for an oil change <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great mileage, great mileage. But Aiden, let's get on to the subject of hydrogen. Now, hydrogen. I have driven the Toyota Mirai, which I was really impressed with. Um, it, now, the Toyota Mirai, for anyone that doesn't know about the car, it is expensive. It's uh, 66,000 66, euros. Yeah, so it's, it. it is expensive. Now, you can picture it being a kind of more luxurious um a more prius. luxurious prius. well yeah. yeah well we're going back to the first prius from 1998 to 2003 toyota made a loss in every prius made a loss almost wow. made a loss in them yeah um i think they just because of the price of the manufacturing of the batteries at the time and the the inverters capacitors and mm. stuff like that um 
and to get it out there, they just broke even. They made a loss in the first batch, which would have been from 97 to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001. And then they broke even up as far as 2000. They started making a profit in 2003. Um, I had no idea that they were yeah, producing they were, yeah. Them like, at, like at a loss. The Prius really only got recognised, as we know, since 2010. People started to notice mm. it. And taxi drivers, you go into Limerick there now, and, and every second one is a, a Prius now. And a lot of does now trickling in is the used JDM Camry hybrid mm. because a lot of taxis were Camrys back in the day as well and when the Camry was dis- discontinued in 2006 well, it was back to the events just the Crean E and the Octavias and stuff like that wasn't it because like you're speaking of a loss when you go back to 1989 when the Lexus LS 400 came out people said that that car was making a loss for Toyota I, I believe Lexus. so but the engineering and the quality of that car was yeah. super like like the, the chief engineer for the S class that was coming out you called it the W um, W140 when that, that, that was the that model that came out after the yeah, LS that car that, that model yeah. that was delayed by a year and a half because of the LS right and would you believe on the back in Japan there was a or once it was a modification done on the LS and it was called the Irish modification <laughs> <laughs> and it was a car I never heard of this yeah it was from Tom Hogan's at the time uh, where they found the car a bit too soft in the rear suspension so this, the, the engineer of the LS came over to Ireland that time with a suitcase basically full of springs and different shock absorbers and stuff and they fine tuned the suspension on the Irish roads and that modification became known later on as the road rough road pack and it was fitted to worldwide <laughs> So. Aiden, you know so much about this stuff. Small bits and pieces, but <laughs> it was a fascinating car when it came out. Like yeah. it was absolutely amazing. Like that that V eight yeah. engine was so well balanced, mm. you couldn't even hear it running. Speaking you know? about V eight engine, uh, Aiden, in the new LS, it's now uh, a V six. Now in America, they love their V eights. Will the V eight engine see its way back into an LS? That is the question. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people wish it was still a v8 yeah you have driven it i have not driven it i've not driven the oh, new you ls you no no I, I just sat in and i had a look at lexus black rock in dublin um right okay very nice car now i have to be honest aiden my first impressions when i sat into the car was it's not an s class <laughs> really it's just the design um maybe it was just the wrong shade of interior that I was looking at, but it just didn't give me Aye, that the, wow. The, the, you, know? you didn't get the wow factor. The yeah. one I was in had the um, Yamaha piano timber inserts in it, mm. and it was a beautiful cream interior. The car it was a nice car. I got the wow factor out of it, but I suppose going back to uh, an S class and stuff, it's kind of moving away from the generation that bought these kind of cars and moving down to the next generation that's going to be buying these cars. Yeah, they're I, I, yeah, because. Everyone taught the S class and the LS, and they were a granddad's car. Mm. I remember when I was driving one for a while, I absolutely loved it. It was a presidential <laughs> edition, long wheelbase, massage <laughs> seats in the back, and everything. And yeah. I had my buddies would go around in Glenzas and Twin yeah. Cams and stuff. And I said, Why are you driving that? But it was so comfortable. <laughs> but we, <laughs> all, we always had the Twin Cam in the garage for the, yeah. for the occasions, you know. But look, Aiden, like we know of owners that have had S classes and traded them in for LSs. The LSs. And then some well, of them have gone back. Um, the Mercedes S class. Yeah, I think that was uh, an aesthetics thing, wasn't it? Um, mm. But the reliability of the LS was superior to the S class mm. and the Mercedes. I have a mate of mine; he has uh, an AMG, and um, it's the only car that I can forgive for being so unreliable. Because every time I drive it, it does put mm. a smile on my face. It's a phenomenal car, but there's always something wrong with it. As you know, the LS, some of them go around there with a million kilometers in them, and they haven't been touched. Yeah. And that V8 engine is in huge demand. For um for for dry something for light aircraft in Australia and stuff like mm. all those engines they're they're being bought for the engines they're putting them into small power boats and stuff as well it was super reliable but Aiden we need to speak about the rumor <laughs> what the Aston Martin rumor with the, the connection with the Lexus a, there there is a connection with Lexus and Aston Martin as you know the IQ yeah the IQ they do, yeah. they done their own little city version of that mm. lovely hand stitch leather interior supercharged little three cylinder engine before we talk about the rumor Aiden I mean this yeah. is based on a Toyota IQ the Aston Martin version the, uh, the Aston Martin Signet Signet <laughs> yeah um, they don't come up for sale the last one I came as came across would have been the last one was over was oh, it must have been two or three months ago mm. and I came across one 33 grand sterling he wanted for it like 33 grand sterling 
for crazy. what is what is basically an a IQ. Toyota IQ. Yeah. But you got the supercharger and you got the hand stitched interior <laughs> and you got the, 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 the fancy cows leather <laughs> and a bit of leather and nice carpets like but it's just like I, I can't understand like that's an odd car and I don't know what the future has for that car. Is it going to be collectible in the future? It would Do have to think? be there was a limited run, wasn't there? So I reckon it would be, yeah. I've no idea how many bi- they built. How many? I can't answer that yeah. question either. I've no Not idea. a lot of many. I think there was less than 5,000 of them done. But this whole connection between Toyota and Aston Martin and the whole IQ Signet connection, <coughs> that was only to lower Aston Martin's overall CO2 figure, wasn't it? Something to well, do yeah, with that. Well, yeah, it's emission things and stuff. Yeah. Um, Rumour, well, Aston Martin are going, obviously, and it, it's coming true. You can see it in the Lex interior where you have that, that British engineering flair and the quality of the leather and the stitching has gone down to Lexus now. Mm. But the Aston Martin is rumoured to be getting the LFA V10 engine. This is the rumour. <laughs> that is the rumour. <laughs> Remember where you heard it first. Will Aston Martin be filling, uh, fitting the Lexus LFA engine, that fabulous V10 engine, into a future Aston Martin? I hope so. We'll wait and see on that one. It was a lot of power from a small engine. (laughs) No, it's a fantastic engine. It's just like the engineering is incredible. But the LFA is a fantastic car anyway. It's not the fastest car, but it's just fabulous engineering. They had to go yeah. for a digital rev counter, didn't they? Because an yeah. analog rev counter couldn't keep <laughs> up with the engine, like you know. Yeah, that whole thing is just yeah. uh, it, it, look. It's just mental. the sound, it's mental. Engine, yeah. It's mm. it's 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 an engineering masterpiece. Yeah. It's, that's what that car was. But like. it could be another 15, 20 years before Toyota has another big supercar flagship. Well, since um, they don't bring them often, I mean, w- w- what well, was the last <coughs> car before the LFA? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Toyota himself is is a car guy, you know. Yeah. So he's kind of pushed the accountants out of the office and mm. to bring in the joy factor back into driving again, which a lot of manufacturers from all over the world need to go back to. Like, they're all domestic appliances now, aren't they? Like, but the LFA nearly didn't see the light of day, Aiden. There was a lot of people within Toyota that were dead set against it. Uh, you know, like budgets. developing it because of money. The budgets. Every, yeah. Everything is down to budget. But I guess, um, I suppose at the time, Toyota went through a bit of a, a dark patch there with the recalls for the unintended acceleration and stuff. And there was doubts over their engineering. And they were like, their engineering was never in question. But I guess it was, they were a bland car. Yeah. Like, come on, let's look at the, I shouldn't be saying it, but the 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 events. Oh yeah, the event. Oh, yeah, the events has been canned, isn't the it? Events, the events. The events has been canned. Um, right. It was around too long. Plus, the Camry is replacing it. But the saloons and stuff like the the, mm. the market firm was gone anyway. But I suppose to be fair, it could never really compete with the Passat for for looks and stuff. I would put my hands mm. up there. But the events, the petrol events, the one point six. That was a bomb proof car. They're inside, and the taxis are all around the country. They stay going, you know. Mm. The two thousand and nine to two thousand and sixteen. It was basically the same body shell. And then they started fitting the BMW diesel engine into it, so that was that was the end of it. So, Aidan, the um, the Camry that's making a comeback. Camry is making a comeback. Yeah. Last Camry was in Europe uh, since mm. two thousand and six. And the Camry it's coming w- back in the hybrid. And it'll be based on the Lexus the ES, ES because the origin- Lexus <coughs> GS is gone. That's correct. And yeah. the original Camry became the, the the original version of that was the Toyota Windham, which became the Lexus <laughs> ES in the states. <laughs> I have. I've never that, heard of a Wyndham. Have you, no, a beautiful <laughs> car. Um, they were here. They, they were Japanese imports only. That was a beautiful car back in its day. Right. Um, and the Camry is just. It's mm. coming back. It was a beautiful drive. Always was. Got a bit boring or a bit granddad looking. But yeah. The new one has got the flare back, and it's going to be a nice car. I hope it's a nice car. I've and driven Aiden, the 2010 yeah. Camry Hybrid in Oz, and. It was beautiful. It was an absolute lovely car to drive. A bit boring looking, yeah. to be fair. But then they brought out the Orion version of that in Australia. And that was a really, really quick car. And you've driven the plug-in hybrid Prius. Yeah, for last year I was driving in Suicide. Our sponsor, Brian Geary, mm. he gave me the plug-in Prius to drive. And on that event, I got 220 miles to the gallon. Wow, 220, 220 miles to the gallon yeah, that, that, was that com- run. That was combined with the plug-in side of it and switching yeah. back to the, the hybrid side of it. Beautiful car. And what sort Absolutely. of mileage can you get on full electric with a plug-in hy- uh, hybrid? I think the range in that is going up to 40, 50 kilometers yeah. at motorway speeds. Yeah, so around 30 miles, 25 yeah. miles. Yeah, it's, it's, n- it's not yeah. a lot, but when you combine it, 
Yeah. You know, because you could like you could commute from a from a day or from here to Raheen and stuff in fully electric at motorway speeds, hundred and twenty kilometers. But once you do that then you break into the the hybrid system. But that's very fuel efficient in itself anyway, like it's always always has been. And you have your regenerative braking, so you you'd have your regenerative gain braking for yeah, yeah, but that goes back into the original hybrid side of it. Now you can charge, I believe, the the plug in the lithium ion battery on the motorways as well, but you lose MPGs. Mm. But then you can <coughs> excuse me, you can win it back then when you get back into the city. But I suppose really does or well you can do it if you want, but I just drive when the the normal hybrid system, go yeah. to the city, plug it in, go about your business, come back, do your commute, drain that battery and go back to your standard Prius. <laughs> <laughs> 230 miles a gallon there's nothing wrong with that you can't go wrong with that it changes in your pocket <laughs> yeah but yeah. but Aidan let's just talk <coughs> about the um, now me. okay miles per gallon mm. right that's yeah. fantastic on the Prius but Hyundai all, also have hybrid cars coming out fantastic yeah. fuel consumption from them I mean I had a Hyundai Ionic I drove from Stansted down to Goodwood and the whole way back and it, it, it achieved 62 miles per gallon. I thought that that was... And that was a brand new car with only 12 miles on it. So that was impressive. Yeah. That was well, impressive. You think it's impressive. Well, if you look back, that's a 2018 car. Mm. You had a uh, 2004, 2005, 2006 Prius. Yes. Not a yes. lot of people know that. <laughs> Big secret I had three there. Priuses. <laughs> and what was your best MPG of those cars? Uh, it was 61. 61 was my best achieved miles per gallon out of... Owning those three cars. So why isn't the iconic doubling? <laughs> the, <that>? ionic. <laughs> the, uh, the ionic. The ionic. It could become iconic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. But yeah, but it's 2018 and yeah. you're comparing it to a 2004, 2005, 2006 yeah. Prius. The new Prius is averaging 75 to the gallon. Mm. You can push it up to 90 driving like a Nana, mm. I suppose, which you had to do, in fairness, to get the 61 exactly. miles per gallon really out of to. the older model, like, but then you've got the plug-in one as well. So, yeah. But yeah, it's still, it's, I suppose, really, they're low-emission cars, you know, mm. they weren't designed for racing. So it was designed to for fuel efficiency and, I suppose, more importantly, for cleaner air for everybody to breathe. Mm. So it doesn't matter what, what brand it comes from, any car that does almost zero, pol zero emissions, that's good for us all, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now... Getting on to the uh, elephant in the room, right? The Toyota Supra using a BMW engine. Aiden, what is going on? That's to be announced. My <laughs> fingers are crossed in that one. <laughs> you're, you're crossing your fingers that I'm it's going to be a Toyota engine. I'm crossing my engine. I would love to see that. I was over in Goodwood and I was told it's going to be a BMW straight six. Performance, engines, I have no idea. Yeah, um, now... I, more I, than likely... The yeah. rumours are right. It probably is going to be the BMW engine. And I'm just trying to rattle my head. I think it's around 320 or 340 brake horsepower. Um, Rumoured. Oh, Rumored, nobody yeah. seems to know as yet. But it's not enough, Aiden. It's not enough. It's just like the GT86. When that came out, that car didn't have enough power either. Like. No, I agree. Um, well, I drove the GT86 at the launch yeah. back in 2012. So I, I'm worried about the Supra, that it's going to be launched and that they're going to, like... Say it doesn't have enough power and it oh, might yeah. handle great and all that, yeah. but, but it, why it, don't they give it decent power at the it start? Seems to, it seems to be a trend. Unless you're going to spend massive money, 80 Gs plus, on a sports car, you're not going to get that massive power. Hmm. Um, I mean, like... I think, are we all, I, think, I think, like the GT badge, like the Golf GTI and stuff like that, that's not the same car it was back in the day. The XR3i, that was a nice car. The Corolla GTI... I, I, I broke a clutch in, in, a, in a Ford XR3i. <laughs> <laughs> they were nice we'll keep cars. Keep that one quiet. <laughs> they, were, they were sports cars back yeah. in the day and they had the performance and they had the looks yeah. and stuff. Now you have a, a Golf GTI or something like that. What a diesel? Yeah. You know? The GTD. The G, the G, the G, <laughs> yeah. Or is it the GT TDI? That one. <laughs> you have red eyes and black eyes and all sorts. Like, but we're going yeah. back. Like, It's all about looks now and stuff like you know mm. like the Mazda MX-5 what a fantastic car there's not enough power in that either I know it seems know. to be a trend across yeah. all the manufacturers yeah. now um, well it, look people bang on about the Mazda MX-5 it's a great driving car and the whole lot but uh, would I own one <laughs> I said no I wouldn't <laughs> I just have to admit that I wouldn't drive it and uh, it's, still got, it's, it's still got the hairdresser's look hasn't it ah like okay uh, you know the Mark 4 or what mark are we at in the uh, MX-5? 
I, th- I, I think today's one is the Mark IV, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so the Mark III was bigger. It was a bigger car. It so was the a Mark- chunkier car. I think it was a bit heavier yeah. as well, wasn't it? So the Mark IV, they went down to a kind of a, a smaller version of it. Back but to basics. Like, yeah. yeah, but I prefer the Fiat uh, 124 Spider. <laughs> I prefer that. And it's based on the same car anyway. Yeah, but, more, well, it's got it's got more of the Italian flair, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, same mm. car, but yeah, it's got more. Well, then you got the Fiat pickup that's based on the the Mitsubishi, isn't it? Right. It's the same ones. Like they're all shown. Like yeah, there's a there's like the X class yeah. Mercedes. Yeah. They're banging about that. Oh, it's a gr- Nissan, Nissan Navara. Navara. <laughs> yeah. Why why yeah. spend the extra couple of grand? Oh yeah, Aiden, you were talking about a, a Lexus pickup, possibly. There's a possible Lexus. There's rumours on the Lexus forums and stuff on the, on the stable from Japan that they're going to bring out a pickup based on the the Tundra from uh, from America. The Tundra yeah, is it Tundra or the, Deco- the Tacoma? My apologies. The, the Tacoma, yeah, and that's right. that's powered by an normally aspirated V8 yeah. petrol engine. I've in never heard America. of that. <laughs> but let's get on to the. Toyota hydrogen truck. Now I've I've heard about this. Uh, Toyota are trying to develop this. It's got two Toyota Mirai engines in it, two but hybrid systems. Two the, hi- the, the it's an articulated two, truck. Yeah, they're doing that under the Hino badge, but they're also mm. testing it in the states with Kenworth, and mm. I think they're going to um, give the Tesla truck a run for its money. Yeah, I I I think uh, Elon <laughs> Musk. <laughs> he won't be having any an easy time of it with all these other well, he's, he's electric la- cars He's lost coming. his funding from Toyota, like, you know. Tesla mm. mightn't be here today if it wasn't for the Toyota Motor Corporation bailing him out of trouble back in the, the crash there in 2008, 2009. Mm. They gave him a huge cash injection. But there is a, a lot of history with Tesla going back as far as 1990 with the, the full EV RAV4. The full, full, full electric. electric RAV4 that came out in... The states and for California, nineteen they ran from nineteen ninety to nineteen ninety four, ninety five, and then there was a pause, and then it came back like in two thousand and six again. Mm. But they were, I think, it was an experiment for the the fully electric and for their hydrogen stack as well. They were running the internal combustion right, engine on hydrogen that time, yeah. and then they scrapped it, and then they came back with the fuel cell. Yeah, and that's what's in your 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 Hino truck as well. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's um, going to be fantastic. Toyota are adamant that hydrogen is the future. Yeah. And you don't have to charge the hydrogen. You have to charge the electric. <laughs> so, and ha- now, not, how long is it going to take to charge yeah. a Tesla truck? But the whole thing, Aiden, at the moment is the infrastructure with hydrogen. There's just not enough stations. I don't, I don't know at the moment how many stations there is I'm in the UK. I'm not too sure. I know there's two pumps in um, in the, in the city of London there's one in the city of London and there's one outside the city of London mm. because the city of London police have six Mariahs on the beach there they have six, six Mariahs six Mariahs on the beach yeah wow so it, it's zero emissions uh, yeah well you drove it yourself the yeah. performance oh, it, was, it, it outperformed yeah. um, the likes of Nissan Leaf and stuff like that yeah like. and so it's z- just like emissions. driving it's just like driving a fully electric car yeah. only you never plug it in well, and we, all and that's emitted is water. Is water, yeah. Um, Akio Toyota was commenting there one time. He pressed, they pressed the button on the dash for letting off the, oh, yeah. the water and stuff, and he drank the water from the exhaust. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's not <laughs> recommended to ever drink the water out it of a Mirai, Gio, okay? <laughs> so we'll make a coffee. Don't then. ever do it, okay? <laughs> well, you done it, yeah. And, and a lot of other people have developed mm. hydrogen cars. They've always proven that it was safe because it was just steam, wasn't it? Condensed water. <laughs> I leave it on the ground anyway. <laughs> but but Aiden, you want to show us this calendar? You've got well, a yeah, very 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 special calendar here. I know that you were you were into the truck, so mm. I bought. I believe it was the second truck that Toyota ever made. The second truck that Toyota ha- ever, ever made. made. I don't know what. It, I'm sure it was based on an American one, mm. but um, it's from a, a 1955 calendar in Japan, and they also had the Toyota. Mm. Just hold it up there so they can see it. They also had the 1955 Toyota crown on it. So this calendar is from 1955. 1955 in Japan. There's a small bit of it missing, unfortunately. (laughs) It should be framed, Aiden. What are you doing with it? It it needs to be done, yeah. We need to frame it. Yeah. But here's your... That that later became the Hino's. Wow. Yeah, so the Hino became the heavy division of the Toyota Motor Corporation. And then you had the Toyota Motor Corporation. And then Daihatsu became the small car division. Wow. So that is fantastic to yeah, have that. Yeah, it's nice to have. That's a real survived all these piece. years, like, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it should be in a frame. I should be ashamed of myself. <laughs> Next stop, framing shot. I should be wearing white gloves, <laughs> handling that. But, Aiden, is there anything else we need to talk about 
Lexus or um, Toyota. That's oh yeah. What are the models coming down the line with a Toyota in 2018? You said there's yeah. Some we have we have the new Camry. Mm. Uh, the new Camry is coming. So that's I'm definitely looking forward to that one. The new Rav Four, and that's going to have two new. That's going to have a new hybrid train, and the Corolla. They're bringing the replace. Well, they're not repl- they're replacing the 1.8 with a two liter power plant. Mm. Uh, so you'll have a two liter hybrid, and you have the 2.4 hybrid train, and. The, the Auris badge has been dropped and the Corolla badge is coming back in the hatchback and there's a brand new Corolla saloon coming out and that's going to be available in petrol only and hybrid. So mm. as I'm from January 2019, there is no more diesel Toyotas. They're gone. That's it? That's it. January 19? Hybrid and full petrol. I want to see the Karina name come back. I would love <laughs> to see the Karina come back. <laughs> I want... Well, let's make a campaign, right? Bring back the Karina name in the Toyota range, right? Yeah, we even had the Karina. They've made songs and all yeah. about the Karina, haven't they? I mean, <laughs> every, like... Every farmer's <laughs> market in the country had <laughs> a Karina either. Volkswagen made a massive U-turn with the Bora. What a stupid name for a car. My sister had one. The Volkswagen Bora. And they, and they, and they repla- went back to Jetta. Did they replace the, the Bora with the Jetta? Because mm. the Bora was a bit of a... Stupid Boring. Name. <laughs> That's the word, Aiden. I suppose, yeah. I'll, the Jetta was all right. They tried yeah. to... Volkswagen back... There was a big advertising campaign, if you remember, on the TV there at one time. I think it was around 2009, 2010, right. where they were launching, I don't know, was it the Jetta Hybrid or the Golf Hybrid? Right. Um, it did make the roads in the States, but it flopped. It never came to Europe that mm. I know of. I haven't never seen one. But um, they went down in, they launched the fully electric Golf, which is a nice car. It's supposed to be a lovely car to drive. Mm. GTE. Yeah, it, lo- yeah. it does look nice, though, in fairness. Um, I know, the Mark 7 Golf is a fine-looking car. Yeah, yeah, it is a nice car. They do have a nice flair, but... Uh, <laughs> but you're just Toyota. <laughs> uh, no, I, a, good, I like I was, a good car is a good car. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of nice Hondas out there now as well, like, yeah. you know. Um, Mitsubishi is some fantastic look. Mm. Like, the nicest, one of the nicest cars come out of the Japanese side of things at the moment, the Mazdas. They're making some fantastic looking cars now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're back to their own engines. So that black top Ford engine is gone and the Peugeot diesel engines are gone from them. Mm. Um, I like the Mazdas. They're yeah. making some really nice cars. Yeah, they have a um, nice range, yeah. The Mitsubishi Outlander, the plug-in, that is a nice little SUV. Mm-hmm. I quite like it. There's a revised version of that coming to soon too, isn't there? Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of nice cars. Um, like I said, a nice car is a nice car. I do like to look at the Audis and stuff, but I suppose it's a bit like Donald Trump, you know, fake news. <laughs> <laughs> the quality isn't there. They're, like, they're just a disposable fashion accessory, aren't they? And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> and on that shell bomb, I'm going to leave you all. <laughs> Aiden, thank you very much pleasure coming in thank you and we'll see who's going to sit in the chair for the next interview we'll have to see it's up to you guys maybe you can suggest somebody to join me here but thank you all very much for watching and i'll chat to you all this weekend oh aiden we nearly forgot we can't go yet we can't go yet yeah we have to chat about the drive against suicide limerick that's yep. happening this sunday aiden yeah uh, sunday the 30th of september yeah uh, it's our third annual event um it's going to be a good one Mm. We've a lot of trucks coming this year. I'm trucks so, coming? Are you going to bring one? <laughs> what are you going to bring? I don't know what I'm going. Oh, no, I actually know what I'm going to bring, but I'll keep it as a surprise. Very good. <laughs> yeah. So it's the thirtieth of uh, September. Yeah. Starting at the Woodlands House Hotel. It's going to be a busy morning. We have one or two surprises in store. <laughs> uh, it's twenty euros to register your car. Now mm. we're looking for more classics and vintage this year, and trucks and bikes. Um, and all the money raised goes to two worthy causes Limerick Suicide Watch which do fantastic work patrolling the bridges of Sh- Limerick City and Marine Search and Rescue you know they're really Brilliant. two local charities and they really need our help financially mm. and stuff like and why not it's going to be a good day and it's going to be a good yeah. day for car enthusiasts and most importantly to get young people together and raise awareness excellent Aiden. Yeah. So keep it in mind next Sunday this is happening now guys Yeah, Sunday Drive week. Against Suicide Sunday week, isn't it? Limerick no, but this video is going out. Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. <laughs> I should have briefed him earlier. <laughs> but, yeah, it's this Sunday, guys, okay? September 30th. Get down to the Woodlands House Hotel in Adair County, Limerick, and get registered and join us on the run. Trucks. Trucks, cars. Plenty of cars. Yeah. Once it's got four wheels, two wheels. Yeah. <laughs> bring it on. No problem. No one will be left behind. 
And okay. if, you, if you can't take part, come and just see us off and a bit of support would be nice in the morning. Be good to bring yeah, down yeah, the kids. Yeah. Something to do on Sunday yeah. morning for a change. Come down to the woodlands, yeah. have a look uh, at all the cars and have yourself a coffee and a scone. Exactly. And, yeah. Okay, guys, I'll chat to you all Sunday for another video. But Aiden, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll leave you. Thank you very much for having <laughs> us. Cheers. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers! Bye -bye. But the whole slogan, like, from Lexus, diesel is dead. I don't think diesel is dead for a long time yet, Aiden. Well, I suppose it'll take a while to phase it out and stuff like that. Mm. But a diesel engine belongs in a truck or a train or a boat or something.